Welcome to PLZ Soccer's fixture preview of the SPFL. One more week to go, Tam. One last 90 minutes. Is that the same for Rangers? Let's start with them. They face St Mirren. Same rules apply this weekend. Three points or nothing? Yeah, as I think it's a long period of time to be uh, kind of going over a, a loss. So I think for Rangers it's imperative that they stay on the coattails of Celtic. You wouldn't mm -hmm. expect Celtic to drop in. Um, so I think it's imperative that Rangers get the win and keep the pressure off the manager. I think anything other than a win then the, the, the shouts will become louder for him. Bit of a shaky, kind of unsteady performance against Hearts, especially the first half. We expecting Hearts to maybe capitalise a bit more? Yeah, I thought, that, I thought that Hearts played well in the game, just didn't really create enough chances. Yeah. Uh, I thought that Rangers deserved to win the game, but 1-0, mm -hmm. you know, it's always, a sh it's always a shaky peg the last 10 yeah. minutes. And Listen, I thought that Hearts did play well, but I thought Rangers deserved to win. I thought, yeah. they, I thought Ryan Kent looked back to his best as well, so they'll just want to win the game and just go into the, the break <coughs> on the high. Old Ruffy St Mirren could create history this weekend if they beat Rangers. They'll have beat both sides of the old firm for the first time since the 1989-1990 season. Yeah, but it's the old saying, isn't it? St Mirren will be saying to themselves, this is the best time to get them when the morale's mm -hmm. a bit low. Yeah, they'll be a wee bit more confident after getting that win, but it was very nervy up until the 64th minute, until they got the goal. After yeah. they got the goal, you could see the relief, you know, that all the players wanted the ball. Tam's touched on it, Ryan Kent. Had a couple of wee runs as yeah. well, so they'll go into the game a lot more confident. But it's up to St. Mirren to sort of a silence them early on. Just before we move on to Celtic, then the subs Tam that uh, Van Bronckhorst brought on Morelos and Arfield and Wright created a lot of chances, brought loads of energy. He's not really had a starting like a set starting eleven. Van Bronckhorst has he? Do you think they three should maybe be starting every week if they're making those kind of chances? Yeah, I think that uh, I think the subs made a big difference. As mm -hmm. I said, I thought that Rangers first half, you know, huffed and puffed without creating yeah. anything, but. I think Arfield is important because he makes runs in behind. You know, he opens up space for oh, yeah. other players. Uh, Morelos come on, and I think Cholak's out the game tomorrow uh, today yeah, as well. Right, so, yeah. I think that Morelos will start the game against St Mirren. And listen, it's up to him to, to do the business. He's been in and out of the team, but it's a new opportunity for him. You know, just going into the break to show what he can mm. do. What have you took then? I've went for two one. I went a narrow win for Rangers. Right. I've went Rangers two 0 Right, we're well, moving on to Celtic. There were moments away from a draw with Dundee United last weekend, Ruffy. Is that the frustrating thing about Celtic for teams that they think they've got them and then in the last seconds or minutes they manage to get a goal to mm. get the win? Yeah, well, they just keep going right to the end. I, I, I think it was quite noticeable that Ange, for the first time in a long time, has come out and said his team didn't play particularly well, not up to the standards uh -huh. that he wanted, but they, they keep they keep scoring goals. I always think it's risky when you chop and change your team with six and seven players. and mm -hmm. For a wee well, it looked as if you know that was the case, but at the end of the day, they've got quality strikers. They've got so many strikers in reserve to come on and get mm -hmm. goals. Well, Ruffy, uh, Tam, sorry, they face County this weekend. They've started to kick into gear, Ross County, as well, but can we see an upset happening at Celtic Park? No, I don't see an upset at Celtic Park. I think maybe away from home it would have been yeah. a better opportunity for Ross County, but I think obviously they've won back to back games. Uh, they're, they're climbing up a few places, but I think Celtic will be too strong. I think they again they want to get into the, into the break on a high, and yeah. there's a few players going to be in the World Cup. You know, so it'll be interesting to see if they play. And they're jumping into tackles. I wouldn't think so, but <laughs> um, I, I'd expect Celtic. I've went Celtic four now. I think they win a game comfortably. Just touching on the wee bit of VAR drama that we had midweek with Motherwell, the camera. Uh, the SFA have come out and said the camera that should have caught Jota's goal, it never tracked the run, never tracked whatever was supposed to happen, didn't. What can we do about that? Because can VAR cost teams points or goals? It certainly could. I think yeah. Yeah, you need to first and foremost get better batteries in the camera. Because <laughs> yeah. it's, it's obviously, there's been a malfunction somewhere. Yeah. Um, obviously Alan Burroughs came out and said that the cameras were there. So there's, mm -hmm. something's happened, to whether it's conked out or, or something. But Celtic are rightly not happy about it. Yeah. You know, it could, it could have been costly, obviously they won the game, but... It robbed him of a fantastic goal because it would have been uh, yeah. a great goal. And the, um, the angle was a bit. It looked as off. if it was. It looked yeah. as if it was onside. But I think when the, when the linesman gives offside, I think I don't think they were going to reverse it. I think if they gave on, onside, I think they'd have played and, and went with that decision. So mm -hmm. you know, I, it's poor, and we've got to, we've got to tidy that, that side yeah. up with our. Right, moving on then. Hearts and Livingston. Livingston uh, beat Aberdeen last uh, during the week. <laughs> Ruffy, it was three penalties that no one called for. That VAR was there to yeah. save the day. Yeah, that's that's the same consistency, is it? And it's yeah. how you interpret, you know, the handball. I thought the one of them in particular was a bit mental. It was just like the hand behind the, the whole body. Uh -huh, yeah. And to say that's, you know, whatever it is, your ball, in a, your hand in an unnatural position is mm -hmm. crazy because if somebody hits a ball, I'd love somebody to hit a ball, somebody who makes the rules and see what they do. You know, if we, 10 yards, somebody whacks it, you're going to, your whole body's going to uh -huh. react to yeah. it. So. 
No, but they'll, they'll go into the game with a wee bit of confidence. I think Hearts need to win this one. Hearts mm-hmm. need to finish this wee, this wee bit and move up the league again, you know. And it's the same with every team in this league. It's a, it's a month off. That you need to mm-hmm. go into that month off, positive rather than negative. Well, Tam, Robbie Nielsen wasn't happy with the time added on against Rangers the other week. Can he really complain about that or use that as an excuse when they haven't recorded a shot on target in the 90 minutes before they added time? No, I, th- I just think that Robbie likes to moan at anything, you know, whether right. that's referees or time added on. Mm-hmm. You know, he seems to he seems to like a moan at the end of the game, particularly yeah. if they've lost. Um, I don't understand where they're coming from. I think that, that Rangers deserve to win the game. I think if Hearts were more positive mm-hmm. uh, and, and, you know, were, were dominating the last 10 minutes, then maybe, but... I think Hearts could have been an all night no squad, so I don't I didn't understand that one from Robbie. Right, Kilmarnock will face Hibs. What's going on with the high bees at the moment, Tam? Is Lee Johnson under pressure as well? A little bit, starting to build, I yeah. think. Um I think the performance during the week against Ross County is, was the worst of the season. Aye, it was and great. you know, you, you just don't get away with that at Hibs. You don't get away with that with the supporters mm-hmm. there. Um you know, they they've got on the players back on the managers back. You know, five defeats out of six. This is an absolutely huge game for both clubs. Yeah. I think going into the break, Hibs you know, if they can get a win, they're in, in and around that third place. I mm-hmm. think you'll forget about the last five or six games if you win the game. But if you lose the game, you know, the pressure's enormous. I looked at Hibs' fixtures eh, coming back from the break and they've got Celtic Rangers and Hearts in the oh, first four right. games yeah. when they come back so, in Livingston. So <laughs> he needs a win just to take a wee bit of pe- pressure off him. What have you taken for that one? I went for one each, I couldn't split them. Oh, I right. seem to be going for Hibs every week and it's cost me points. So <laughs> You're the Hibs, problem. If Hibs, if, Hibs win, then if Hibs win, fair enough, but I'm going to go for a draw one each. Right. Ruffy, Derek McKenna says that um, Kelly were playing like a championship team and they made mm-hmm. three changes before half-time against Dundee United. They were 3-0 down, that's never a good sign. No, I think that was just frustration after yeah. that third goal. And then he went, right, you three get off and you three go on and, and try and sort this out. But uh, I said that right at the beginning of the season. I think they are pretty average. I don't think they've got a lot of... I don't think they've got a lot in reserve that's going to turn games yeah. against the better sides against the teams down the bottom of the league yeah they'll have their wee win here or there I, I think I've went for Hibs to win this one uh, I, I always think it's difficult to recover for a 4 nothing defeat yeah well just quickly then will Hibs make top 6 this season do you think? yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they will yeah, I think they've got to, get, got to get their act together and if Tam keeps writing all the articles <laughs> I'm sure it'll have to click in sometime mm, there we go eventually it'll come <laughs> um, St Johnston against Motherwell up next uh, currently 6 St Johnston in the table they've picked up 4 recently Tam they have uh, you know a great last minute equaliser yeah. particularly for the guys in the predictor that had a draw myself included oh, so there you go um, no they have they've picked up they're showing a never say die attitude Nicky Clark great goal the other night you know, he salvage a point with 10 men mm-hmm. that's a decent point away to St Mern St Mern are playing well at home so Motherwell playing good football that's struggling to win games points. you know I'm really want I'm really I'm good friends with Hammy and, and Brian Kerr I really want them to do well but yeah. They're struggling a little bit at the minute and I just don't see them winning the game. Um, I think I went for a draw in the game. I think that they're capable of going up there and getting a draw, but he, he needs a few wins, Hammy. Do they need to go a wee bit more attacking then with playing Van Veen and Lou Malt maybe up? I think they might do that. Yeah. I think Malt was in the bench the other night and I'd mentioned that. I think they might maybe play mm. one up front against Celtic, but St Johnson away, I think you go more positive yeah. and you try and get the win. But again, all, the, all, all of these teams don't want to get into this break on the back no. of defeat. Is this a good time for a break for Motherwell then, Ruffy? Uh, only if they win the game. Yeah. You know, if they don't win the game, you know, the pressure mounts for you've got to sit and worry about it for the next month, you know, what you're gonna to do to change it. I think St Johnson are getting yeah, I think they were a bit fortunate to get that last goal, but they won against Rangers. It's a home game. I think the crowd will go up maybe five, six, seven hundred for that one and I, I think I went for St Johnson to win it. Right then, Aberdeen and Dundee United. An interesting result the last time the two of them played, Dundee United ran out four nil winners, Tam. What do you see going this time? Dundee United seem to have a good record against that uh, Aberdeen. Uh, seem to have a bit of a bogey team for them. Three out of the last five games. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Yeah. I think that they've got a decent record there, but I just think Aberdeen at home this season are yeah. just a different animal. They're, I think they're the highest scorers in the league at home. Um, they've handed out a few, you know, tankings, fours and fives. So I think they win the game, uh, but I think it'll be close. I think Dundee United are improving under Liam Fox. Mm-hmm. There's signs of that great result during the week. Unlucky at Celtic the week before, but I think Aberdeen might just nick it 2 1. Pataudry, Ruffy, what are you thinking? Yeah, it's the same time. You know, I think Aberdeen at home, the players seem confident up there. Supporters are right behind them. If they get an early goal, they, they generally go on and win it. I'm, I'm, a wee, I'm not taking that Dundee United 4 nothing against Kilmarnock into it too much because I think right. Kilmarnock are poor. So I, I've went, I think I went a home win. 
Oh no, okay. Right then, before we finish, quiz time. I surprised you about it last week. You knew it was coming this time. <laughs> Quickest answer. It was a doing last week. It was a bit. Probably a bit doing again. <laughs> right, I've go. made them a bit easier, so okay. came a bit of a chance to have. Right, okay. right, Scotland squad announcement this week in Turkey. Who is the youngest player to join Steve Clark's side? Um, Parson. Parson. Calvin Ramsey. <laughs> Which Premier Sips? Premiership side didn't allow their players to travel on international duty Celtic. this week. Oh, we got it first. <laughs> and who scored their first professional goal for St Johnston against Rangers last weekend? James Brown. Oh, right. Who's the youngest mem Who's the youngest manager in the Premiership currently? Liam Fox. That's quick. Two one. Two one. Right, last no, one. One more. Oh, no. One more. The World Cup starts next week in Qatar. What's the first game? Ecuador, Qatar. Got it. It's the other way around. But... <laughs> oh no, half a point. Half a point. Half a point. <laughs> half a point. <laughs> Ecuador, Qatar. Half a way run. It's the two teams. <laughs> well, we'll continue when we return when the Premiership <laughs> is back. We'll see you then.